Hi, welcome back. This diagram shows us the path of earthquake waves as they pass through the different layers of the earth. The black arrows represent S waves, the yellow arrows represent P waves. Let's try and unpick some of the Uh, let's try and unpick some of the features that we can see on this diagram. Firstly, you can see that all of the waves, all of the wave paths, should I say, on this diagram are curved. The reason for that is that the velocity of the earthquake waves changes with depth. Because it's constantly changing, there's a constant refraction of these waves actually going on. Most importantly, though, for our understanding of what's happening in the Earth, are the occurrence of what we call shadow zones. Shadow zones are places on the Earth's surface where we don't detect earthquakes from particular locations. This particular diagram is a, is a cross-section right the way through the Earth. So if we look at an earthquake uh, that started uh, what's well, slightly incorrectly called the epicenter there, uh, near the top of this diagram, should really be the focus of the earthquake, the earthquake waves spread out from that location. Earthquake waves will directly travel from the epicenter or the focus, should I say, to 104 degrees away from that location. So that's an angle in the middle of the Earth of 104 degrees. I'll show you what that means in a moment. Beyond that point, so beyond 104 degrees from the earthquake focus, we don't see any S waves at all. The reason for that, as we established in part one, is that there must be a liquid deep within the Earth. It's how we know there's a liquid outer core. Because that liquid outer core stops P waves from travelling. There's also, though, a P wave shadow zone. So between 104 degrees and about 140 degrees from the earthquake focus, we don't see any P waves. And the reason for that is that the P waves get refracted. They get um, bent as they go into the uh, liquid outer core. The reason for that is that the earthquake waves slow down significantly when they hit that uh, liquid. Partly because it's dense. So the density increases. Partly because... The liquid outer core has no rigidity. That will have an effect on slowing the waves down. So the location of these um, shadow zones is what told um, Gutenberg, for example, that the, there must be this boundary between uh, the mantle and the core where the properties of the uh, materials in those layers change suddenly and significantly. We get evidence for the solid inner core because the earthquake waves that pass through that actually speed up a little bit in the, out, in the inner core. So they arrive uh, 180 degrees away from the, the earthquake focus a little bit faster than we'd expect, um, say, uh, compared to the ones that arrive at 140 degrees. That's what Lehman was working on. So we can see that earthquake waves and their behaviour is the key to working out the, the nature of these, these layers. We can actually work it out or approximate it ourselves. Let me show you what I mean. 
if we have uh, <coughs> a piece of polar graph paper here, just because it shows angles quite nicely, let's draw on uh, an earth. And if we have uh, an earthquake focus up there, the last record of that earthquake will be 104 degrees from the earthquake focus. So what that means is uh, an earthquake wave would travel from the earthquake focus to that point uh, 104 degrees away. Now, for this example, I'm simplifying things a little. I'm assuming that the earthquake wave path there is straight. In reality, it wouldn't be. It'd be a curve. But bear with me because you know, we need to keep the, the numbers a bit simple. So we've got this earthquake wave path and this angle of 104 degrees. We can then start to think about um, the thickness of this, this core, this uh, different layer um, within the Earth. Because that's got to be that distance there. That distance is going to be the thickness of the core. This is how the, uh, the size of the core was first calculated. Now, how do we actually work that out? How can we work out how long that orange line is? Let's add a few more lines here to see if we can simplify this a little. So we've now got lines that go from the surface down to the centre of the Earth. It's, it's the radius of, of the Earth. And we now can see that we have some triangles. When we have triangles, we can start to actually calculate the size of these triangles if we know a few, few little bits of information. The bits of information we know is the radius of the Earth, which is about 6,370 kilometres, if you remember, those of you that did GCSE, remember we worked that out uh, at GCSE in the same way that the ancient Egyptians did. And we've got an angle in the middle there for a right angle triangle of 52 degrees because it's half 104 degrees. So when we've got our triangles like this, let's just uh, simplify this a little. There we go. When we've got our triangles, we can now start to work out the length of that orange line, because that orange line is the adjacent to that 52 degree angle. And the radius of the Earth there is the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. So, if we apply a little bit of trigonometry here, the adjacent over the hypotenuse is the cosine of the angle. We know some numbers, let's put those in. So it's the adjacent divided by 6,370 6, is going to equal co the cos of 52. So that line, the adjacent, the thickness of the, the core, should be 6,370 times 0 0.62, which gives us a thickness of 3,920 kilometres. Now that's a little bit of an overestimate, because the earthquake wave path is actually a curve. But at least it, it does give us an idea, and it shows us how these calculations were initially done. Okay, then. What we need to think about now is the density of these materials. Now density is actually uh, one of the things we can work out through the speed of earthquake waves. But we have got densities of the mantle between 3.3 .3 and 5.5, the outer core about 9.9, .9, and the inner core maybe 12.8. There is some variation in these, but that's fine. Those are the densities. If we now look at the um,
the velocity of earthquake waves, we can actually then start to uh, work out more things about the Earth's load structure. What I'd like you to do is just to sketch a graph here to show how that density changes with depth. Think about the figures we've done. There are, notice there are no figures, no values for, for density there. We can just go from low to high. And you've got the depth measurement there. Have a go at that now. Okay then, let's see what you've come up with. If I sketch uh, the graph on here like this, the key thing is that it's not a nice steady rise. It doesn't just go from low to high. The density increases slowly as we go through the mantle. We get to that um, Gutenberg discontinuity though and the, and the density jumps significantly, almost doubles. There might be a, a slight rise then as we go down through the outer core. And then there's a, a smaller but still sharp jump when we hit the inner core. Okay. As we see a beautiful layered sunset. Seismic waves are the key to understanding the properties of the Earth's layers. Their state of matter, their density, and their thickness. What we need to consider next, though, is what evidence we have for the composition of these layers. What they're actually made of. But that's for another lesson. I'll see you then.